Vilfredo Federico Damaso Pareto, Italian, Vil Free du Parito, born Wilfred Fritz Pareto, the 15th of July 1848 to the 19th of August 1923, was an Italian engineer, sociologist, economist, political scientist, and philosopher. He made several important contributions to economics, particularly in the study of income distribution and in the analysis of individuals' choices. He was also responsible for popularizing the use of the term elite in social analysis. He introduced the concept of Pareto efficiency and helped develop the field of microeconomics. He was also the first to discover that income follows a Pareto distribution, which is a power law probability distribution. The Pareto principle was named after him, and it was built on observations of his such as that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by about 20% of the population. He also contributed to the fields of sociology and mathematics, according to the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot and Richard L. Hudson. His legacy as an economist was profound. Partly because of him, the field evolved from a branch of moral philosophy as practiced by Adam Smith into a data-intensive field of scientific research and mathematical equations. His books look more like modern economics than most other texts of that day, tables of statistics from across the world and ages, rows of integral signs and equations, intricate charts and graphs. Biography <inaudible> 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 Pareto was born of an exiled noble Genoese family in 1848 in Paris, the center of the popular revolutions of that year. His father, Raphael Pareto (1812–1882), was an Italian civil engineer and Ligurian marquis who had left Italy much like Giuseppe Mazzini and other Italian nationalists. His mother, Marie Metinier, was a French woman. Enthusiastic about the 1848 German Revolution, his parents named him Fritz Wilfred, which became Vilfredo Federico upon his family's move back to Italy in 1858. In his childhood, Pareto lived in a middle-class environment, receiving a high standard of education, attending the new created Istituto Tecnico Liardi where Fernando Pio Rossellini was his mathematics professor. In 1869, he earned a doctor's degree in engineering from what is now the Polytechnic University of Turin, then the Technical School for Engineers. His dissertation was entitled, The Fundamental Principles of Equilibrium in Solid Bodies. His later interest in equilibrium analysis in economics and sociology can be traced back to this paper. Topic. From civil engineer to classical liberal economist For some years after graduation, he worked as a civil engineer, first for the state-owned Italian railway company and later in private industry. He was manager of the Iron Works of San Giovanni Valdarno and later general manager of Italian Iron Works. He did not begin serious work in economics until his mid-forties. He started his career a fiery advocate of classical liberalism, besting the most ardent British liberals with his attacks on any form of government intervention in the free market. In 1886, he became a lecturer on economics and management at the University of Florence. His stay in Florence was marked by political activity, much of it fueled by his own frustrations with government regulators. In 1889, after the death of his parents, Pareto changed his lifestyle, quitting his job and marrying a Russian, Alessandrina Bakunina. She left him in 1902 for a young servant. Topic. Economics and sociology In 1893, he succeeded Léon Walra to the chair of political economy at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland where he remained for the rest of his life. In 1906, he made the famous observation that 20% of the population owned 80% of the property in Italy, later generalized by Joseph M. Duran into the Pareto Principle also termed the 80-20 rule. In one of his books published in 1909 he showed the Pareto distribution of how wealth is distributed, he believed, through any human society, in any age, or country. He maintained cordial personal relationships with individual socialists, but always thought their economic ideas were severely flawed. He later became suspicious of their humanitarian motives and denounced socialist leaders as an aristocracy of brigands who threatened to despoil the country and criticized the government of Giovanni Giolitti for not taking a tougher stance against worker strikes. Growing unrest among labor in Italy led him to the anti-socialist and anti-democratic camp. 
His attitude toward fascism in his last years is a matter of controversy. Pareto's relationship with scientific sociology in the age of the foundation is grafted in a paradigmatic way in the moment in which he, starting from the political economy, criticizes positivism as a totalizing and metaphysical system devoid of a rigorous logical experimental method. In this sense, we can read the fate of the Parisian production within a history of the social sciences that continues to show its peculiarity and interest for its contributions in the 21st century Giovanni Bassino, Sugli Studi Parettiani all'Alba del 21 Secolo in omaggio a Vilfredo Pareto, numero monografico in memoria di Giorgio Sola a cura di Stefano Monti Bragadin, Storia politica societa. Quaderni di Science Humane, Anno X, N, 15, Junio di Sombra 2009, p. 1 ESG. The story of Pareto is also part of the multidisciplinary research of a scientific model that privileges sociology as a critique of cumulative models of knowledge as well as a discipline tending to the affirmation of relational models of science Guglielmo Rinzavillo, Vilfredo Pareto e i modelli interdisciplinari nella scienza. Sociologia. A29, N, 1, New Series, 1995, pp. 2017 222. See also in Guglielmo Rinzavillo, Una Epistemologia Sensa Storia, Rome, New Culture, 2013, pp. 13 29, ISBN 978 88 6812 222 5. Personal life In 1923 Pareto remarried with Jean Regis, just before he died in Geneva, Switzerland, 19 August 1923, "...among a menagerie of cats that he and his French lover kept." In their villa, "...the local divorce laws prevented him from divorcing his wife and remarrying until just a few months prior to his death." Sociology Pareto's later years were spent in collecting the material for his best-known work, Trattato di Sociologia Generale The Mind and Society, published in 1935. His final work was Compendio di Sociologia Generale In his Trattato di Sociologia Generale Rev. French Trans. 1917, published in English by Harcourt, Brace in a four-volume edition edited by Arthur Livingston under the title The Mind and Society 1935, Pareto developed the notion of the circulation of elites, the first social cycle theory in sociology. He is famous for saying, "...history is a graveyard of aristocracies." Pareto seems to have turned to sociology for an understanding of why his abstract mathematical economic theories did not work out in practice, in the belief that unforeseen or uncontrollable social factors intervened. His sociology holds that much social action is nonlogical and that much personal action is designed to give spurious logicality to non-rational actions. We are driven, he taught, by certain residues and by derivations from these residues. The more important of these have to do with conservatism and risk-taking, and human history is the story of the alternate dominance of these sentiments in the ruling elite, which comes into power strong in conservatism but gradually changes over to the philosophy of the foxes or speculators. A catastrophe results, with a return to conservatism, the lion mentality follows. This cycle might be broken by the use of force, says Pareto, but the elite becomes weak and humanitarian and shrinks from violence. Pareto's sociology was introduced to the United States by George Homans and Lawrence J. Henderson at Harvard, and had considerable influence, especially on Harvard sociologist Talcott Parsons, who developed a systems approach to society and economics that argues the status quo is usually functional. Pareto was a lifelong opponent of Marxism. Fascism and power distribution Benoit Mandelbrot wrote, One of Pareto's equations achieved special prominence, and controversy. He was fascinated by problems of power and wealth. How do people get it? How is it distributed around society? How do those who have it use it? The gulf between rich and poor has always been part of the human condition, but Pareto resolved to measure it. 
He gathered reams of data on wealth and income through different centuries, through different countries. The tax records of Basel, Switzerland, from 1454 and from Augsburg, Germany, in 1471, 1498, and 1512, contemporary rental income from Paris, personal income from Britain, Prussia, Saxony, Ireland, Italy, Peru. What he found, or thought he found, was striking. When he plotted the data on graph paper, with income on one axis, and number of people with that income on the other, he saw the same picture nearly everywhere in every era. Society was not a social pyramid, with the proportion of rich to poor sloping gently from one class to the next. Instead it was more of a social arrow, very fat on the bottom where the mass of men live, and very thin at the top where sit the wealthy elite. Nor was this effect by chance, the data did not remotely fit a bell curve, as one would expect if wealth were distributed randomly. It is a social law. He wrote, something, in the nature of man. Pareto had argued that democracy was an illusion and that a ruling class always emerged and enriched itself. For him, the key question was how actively the rulers ruled. For this reason he called for a drastic reduction of the state and welcomed Benito Mussolini's rule as a transition to this minimal state so as to liberate the pure economic forces. Mandelbrot summarized Pareto's notions as follows. At the bottom of the wealth curve, he wrote, men and women starve and children die young. In the broad middle of the curve all is turmoil and motion, people rising and falling, climbing by talent or luck and falling by alcoholism, tuberculosis and other kinds of unfitness. At the very top sit the elite of the elite, who control wealth and power for a time, until they are unseated through revolution or upheaval by a new aristocratic class. There is no progress in human history. Democracy is a fraud. Human nature is primitive, emotional, unyielding. The smarter, abler, stronger, and shrewder take the lion's share. The weak starve, lest society become degenerate, one can, Pareto wrote, compare the social body to the human body, which will promptly perish if prevented from eliminating toxins, inflammatory stuff, and it burned Pareto's reputation. The future leader of Italian fascism Benito Mussolini, in 1904, when he was a young student, attended some of Pareto's lectures at the University of Lausanne. It has been argued that Mussolini's move away from socialism towards a form of elitism may be attributed to Pareto's ideas, to quote Franz Borchino, a biographer. In the first years of his rule Mussolini literally executed the policy prescribed by Pareto, destroying political liberalism, but at the same time largely replacing state management of private enterprise, diminishing taxes on property, favoring industrial development, imposing a religious education in dogmas. Karl Popper dubbed Pareto the theoretician of totalitarianism. But, according to Cirillo, there is no evidence in Popper's published work that he read Pareto in any detail before repeating what was then a common but dubious judgment in anti fascist circles. Some fascist writers, such as Luigi Amoroso, wrote approvingly of Pareto's ideas. Just as the weaknesses of the flesh delayed, but could not prevent, the triumph of St. Augustine, so a rationalistic vocation retarded but did not impede the flowering of the mysticism of Pareto. For that reason, fascism, having become victorious, extolled him in life, and glorifies his memory, like that of a confessor of its faith. Author Renato Cirillo argued, on the contrary, that some have seen in Pareto's sociological works the foundations of fascism. This is not correct. Even fascist writers did not find much merit in these works, and definitely condemned his economic theories. Topic. Economic concepts. Pareto theory of maximum economics Pareto turned his interest to economic matters and he became an advocate of free trade, finding himself in difficulty with the Italian government. His writings reflected the ideas of Leon Walra that economics is essentially a mathematical science. Pareto was a leader of the Lausanne School and represents the second generation of the neoclassical revolution. His tastes and obstacles Approach to general equilibrium theory was resurrected during the great Parisian revival of the 1930s and has influenced theoretical economics since, in his Manual of Political Economy 1906 the focus is on equilibrium in terms of solutions to individual problems of objectives and constraints. He used the indifference curve of Edgeworth 1881 extensively, for the theory of the consumer and, another great novelty, in his theory of the producer. 
He gave the first presentation of the trade-off box now known as the Edgeworth Bowley. Box Pareto was the first to realize that cardinal utility could be dispensed with an economic equilibrium thought of in terms of ordinal utility, that is, it was not necessary to know how much a person valued this or that, only that he preferred x of this to y of that. Utility was a preference ordering. With this, Pareto not only inaugurated modern microeconomics, but he also demolished the alliance of economics and utilitarian philosophy which calls for the greatest good for the greatest number, Pareto said. Good cannot be measured. He replaced it with the notion of Pareto optimality, the idea that a system is enjoying maximum economic satisfaction when no one can be made better off without making someone else worse off. Pareto optimality is widely used in welfare economics and game theory. A standard theorem is that a perfectly competitive market creates distributions of wealth that are Pareto optimal. Topic. Concepts. Some economic concepts in current use are based on his work. The Pareto Index is a measure of the inequality of income distribution. He argued that in all countries and times, the distribution of income and wealth is highly skewed, with a few holding most of the wealth. He argued that all observed societies follow a regular logarithmic pattern. Log n equals log a plus m log x display style log n equals log a plus m log x where n is the number of people with wealth higher than x and a and m are constants over the years pareto's law has proved remarkably close to observed data the pareto chart is a special type of histogram used to view causes of a problem in order of severity from largest to smallest it is a statistical tool that graphically demonstrates the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. Pareto's law concerns the distribution of income. The Pareto distribution is a probability distribution used, among other things, as a mathematical realization of Pareto's law. Ophelimity is a measure of purely economic satisfaction. Topic. Major works Vilfredo Pareto. Cours de Economie Politique Professe à l'Université de Lausanne. Volume. I. 1896, Volume. 2, 1897. Vilfredo Pareto. Les Systèmes Socialistes, 1902. Vilfredo Pareto. Manual of Political Economy, 1906. Vilfredo Pareto. Trattato di Sociologia Generale. 4 vols. G. Barbara, 1916. Topic. Works in English translation The Mind and Society, Vol. IV, New York, Harcourt, Brace and Company, 1935. The Mind and Society, Vol. 3, Vol. IV, London, Jonathan Cape, 1936. The Ruling Class in Italy Before 1900, S. F. Vanny 1950. In Talcott Parsons, Theories of Society, Foundations of Modern Sociological Theory, 2 volume, The Free Press of Glencoe, Inc., 1961. The Circulation of Elites, pp. 551-57. The Use of Force in Society, pp. 589-97. Combinations and Group Persistence, pp. 780-86. On Logical and Non-Logical Action", pp. 1061–62. On the Equilibrium of the Social Systems", pp. 1288–91. Cycles of Interdependence", pp. 1381–85. Sociological Writings, Prager, 1966. Manual of Political Economy, Augustus M. Kelly, 1971, translation of French edition from 1927. The Transformation of Democracy, Transaction Books, 1984. The Rise and Fall of Elites, An Application of Theoretical Sociology, Transaction Publishers, 1991. Topic articles The Parliamentary Regime in Italy, Political Science Quarterly, Vol. 8, Ginn and Company, 1893. The New Theories of Economics, Journal of Political Economy, Vol. 5, No. 4, September 1897. An Italian View. 
The Living Age, November 1922. Topic see also Elite theory topic References topic Further reading Amoroso, Luigi. Vilfredo Pareto, Econometrica, Vol. 6, No. 1, January 1938. Bruno, G. 1987. Pareto, Vilfredo. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, v. 5, pp. 799-804. Buchanan, James. 2008. Italian Fiscal Theorists. In Hamowy, Ronald. Italian Economic Theorists. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 258-60. doi, 101355 9781412965811, N156. ISBN 978-1-4129-6580-4. LCCN 2008009151. OCLC 750831024. Bassino, Giovanni. The Signification of Vilfredo Pareto's Sociology, Review Européenne des Sciences Sociales, 38, 2000. Iserman, G. 2001. Pareto, Vilfredo (1848–1923), International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences, pp. 11,048–51. Abstract. Femia, Joseph V. Pareto and Political Theory, 2006. Excerpt and text search. Kerman, A. P. 1987. Pareto as an Economist. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, v. 5, pp. 804–08. Livingston, Arthur. Vilfredo Pareto, A Biographical Portrait. The Saturday Review, 25 May 1935. Millikan, Max. Pareto's Sociology, Econometrica, Vol. 4, No. 4, October 1936. Osipova, Elena, translated by H. Campbell Creighton, M. A. The Sociological System of Vilfredo Pareto in Igor Khan ed., A History of Classical Sociology Moscow, Progress Publishers pp. 312-36 Palda, Philip Pareto's Republic and the New Science of Peace 2011 Chapters Online. Published by Cooper Wolfling. ISBN 978-0-9877880-0-9 Parsons, Talcott. The Structure of Social Action, The Free Press, 1949. Tarascio, Vincent J. 1968 Pareto's Methodological Approach to Economics, A Study in the History of Some Scientific Aspects of Economic Thought 1968 Online Edition Forte F. Silvestri P., Pareto's Sociological Maximum of Utility of the Community and the Theory of the Elites, in J. G. Backhouse ed., Essentials of Fiscal Sociology. Conceptions of an Encyclopedia, Peter Lang, Frankfurt M. Main, 2013, pp. 231-65. Topic Primary sources Pareto, Vilfredo 1935. The Mind and Society, Trattato di Sociologia Generale. Harcourt, Brace. Topic external links The two biggest ideas of Vilfredo Pareto in economics Further information from New School University Review Materials for Studying Vilfredo Pareto Vilfredo Pareto The Concise Encyclopedia of Economics. Library of Economics and Liberty 2nd ed. Liberty Fund, 2008. Vilfredo Pareto, A Concise Overview of His Life, Works, and Philosophy, by Fr. James Thornton Works by Vilfredo Pareto at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Vilfredo Pareto at Internet Archive The Mind and Society